Yes. All right, let me ask you for any questions. All right, well, we were talking last time about the Jacobi identity. And let me find that in my notes here. By the way, this is an article on the Lawrence Group um, and the rack, uh, spin one half particles, spin one half fields. Thank you for this background material. Don't feel obliged to read it, but it's there. Um, so, Jack, the identity is. Um, Let's see, which one are we going to use? We're going to use the second one. So it's a commutator of A with a commutator. This is a cyclic form. OK, so that's just simply 0. Now, we've got these TAs that are the generators of the Lie algebra. So of course they would satisfy this. TA, TB, TC, plus TB, TC, TA, plus TC, TA, TB, So this works for any Lie group, Lie algebra, any matrices at all. But we know that TATB is I, F, A, B, C, T, C, summed over C, of course. And so this thing is just begging us to use this. By the way, I thought I'd just mention something to you. Um, in this very dry climate of New Mexico, um, one can bleed easily because of the dryness. And um, one way to bleed less is to eat lots of leafy green vegetables. Uh, what about chocolate? Excuse me? Does chocolate also, chocolate does, also? Does chocolate also work in that way? I don't know. Does it? I don't know. I think we should conduct an experiment. <laughs> and if it doesn't, you should start throwing lettuce heads at us. <laughs> you guys should be pretty much, those of you who ask questions should be pretty much um, um, cured of any um, hemophilia. Um, anyway, so if we put this into here, the first thing we get is well, for example, we get TA commutator TBTC is equal to TA commutator I FABC TC. But now we can do this one. We get two I's, which is a minus sign. And so we get minus FD ACD. And then we have this one, FCAB. TD. I've got TB. Hold on. AC. All right, let me read this carefully. Oh. All right, I. One has to actually read this carefully. So this is TB. So then this one is. All right, I'm just going to read what's in the notes rather than try to do it on the fly or I'll screw up. This is B, C, D, T, D. So this is minus F. In fact, I'm even going to put on my reading glasses. F, D, B, C, F, E, 
A D T E. Now, did you we, did you have a question? Yes, I mean, in the what they call the generators of this particular system, the T A T B D C. There's only three, right? Oh, three for S U two. Oh, but but, um, or three for SO3 in the defining representation, but in general you just have you have N or whatever N is. Right. Yeah. So you can you can just pull that um, what's F called again? Say that again. What's the um, name of F? The structure constant. Structure constant. You can, can you just pull the structure constants out in front of the They're just numbers. So of course you can pull them out. Yeah. And by the way, I may have spoken incorrectly when I answered one of your questions. You asked me whether Rn was either open or closed. Um, I think it's both. Um, it's certainly open because every point, you can find a neighborhood that encloses every point that's still in Rn. Just a sphere around R and as a sphere around the point is an open set that includes a uh, point and that's still in the set. On the other hand, it's also closed because any if you have any convergent sequence of points, it'll converge to a point that's in the space. So it's both open and closed. Alright, um, so this is what we get. But, uh, so that gives us the first term, but we get something from the second term. Namely, we get the TB, TC, TA. Wow, extra bracket here. Isn't that amazing? This is equal to TB. I F D C A T D and this is F D C A F E D D T E and then finally the third term is T C T A T B which is T C I F D A B T D and this is minus F D A B F E C D T E. What's the um, what's the sub index on the second line of the first F? It's over E. And D. But it's repeated it's indices of sum. It's F um, D E F D E D. It's F D C A. Alright, let me make sure I've got everything correct. D B C E A D T E. And we sum over. Yeah, can, yeah. But on, this, on the next line down. Huh? On the next line down. C A. Next line down. F oh, D. C A. Oh, C A. Okay. That's what that's what I was asking. B D T E, and again summed over D and E. That's not all that. No. Yeah, I guess the combination of trick and treating, trick or treating together with my class is not a do. Mm -hmm. It's not good for the teeth or diabetes. Um, it's good for the soul. Well, good for the soul? Chocolate. Well, I hope you're right. Okay, well, we can combine these three. We can substitute these three results into this top, into this second equation. And what we get is F. D, B, C, F, E, A, D, plus F, D, C, A, F, E, B, D, 
plus F A B D F E C D T E is zero. On the other hand, the TEs are linearly independent. So we can write this uh, same equation without the TEs. And we get this expression. Now there's only a sum over D. in the following way. We can say TB, we define it by saying that its AC matrix element is IFCAB. And then we can rewrite these three products in terms of these matrices T. And in particular, the, the first term is... Yes. Can you explain the symbol in front of these slightly better? I, I didn't quite... Oh, sorry, that was a little fast. Um, well, I, just, I don't quite get what your symbols... Like, what, do you, what do you mean? What's Where? The big, the big T with the B... We're going to define some new... We're going to define some matrices. All right. These will turn out to be a new set of generators. Okay. We start with the little T's, then we have big T's. We're defining them in terms of the structure constants. And what we're about to learn from this top equation is that these big matrices obey the commutation relations of the Lie algebra, which is quite remarkable. It's a consequence of the Jacobi identity and the fact that the ordinary generators obey the structure constant commutation relations. Okay, so what we get is F, the first term we're going to write is F D B C F E A D. That, well remember that these structure constants, whether the group is compact or not, are anti-symmetric in the lower indices. So we're going to rewrite this as F D C B F E DA. So I just flip both of them. And now I'm going to write them in terms of this. And because of the i's, what we get is minus TB TA, but the CE matrix element of it. In other words, this thing down here, F, so let's go this way. F, D, C, B, well, it's T, B, it's minus I, because we pull over the I, minus I, and it'll be the, the, um, B, C, no, the, AC, all right, let's get this straight. C, it's this one, that one, is this one, this one. So this is CD. So this is the CD matrix element of that. And then over here, we're going to have minus I, T, and the the, the character, the, the one here is an A, and then what matrix element is it? It's DE. And so the minus I is give you minus one, and so this is minus, you see, TB, TA, C, D, sum over D, E, so it's C, E, which is what I have here. Should there be some kind of result from the sum, like a time zone? So what? 
Shouldn't there be some kind of result from the n, from the sum over d, every time n or something? Well, we're sum. No, we're summing over. It, this is matrix multiplication. Right. C sum over d from one to n gives you the product of the matrices, and it's the oh, C oh, matrix. Oh, I see. I see. All right. Okay. Similarly, the middle one here. This is equal to minus f d c a f e d b, and that's equal to t a t b c e. And then finally, this third one is equal to. I don't have to screw around at all. It's minus i f d a b. So I don't do anything with this. And then I just identify this as a t matrix. And it turns out to be t d c e. So what is this top equation saying somewhat delphically? It's saying TA, TB is I, F, when it, it's a minus I, but you pull it over to the other side, and you get I, F, A, B, D, T, D. So what we've got here is that these matrices T, D, T, A, whatever, are, um, that they obey the commutation relations of Lie algebra of the group with the same structure constants. And that's really quite a remarkable result. And um, these, this, so let, let's just see what we've learned. We've learned whether the group is compact or not, just any continuous group, you can define, once you have the structure constants, you can define a new set of generators in this way. And these are called the, uh, the generators of the adjoint representation. Adjoint representation. Um, in particular, if the generators you start out with, let us say, are the ones that if TA is sigma A over 2, these being the Pauli matrices that are 2 by 2, and you guys have all seen the Pauli matrices hundreds of times in quantum mechanics classes, then you have the ATB is I, it turns out it's epsilon ABC TC. And so now if you define TB AC, or if we wrote this in this other way, this would be F ABC TC. So now we would say that the AC matrix element of these new generators TB would be I times um, FABC, so it's just I epsilon ABC. Well, these things are just the omegas that we were talking about. To the overall factor of I, I'm not sure if it's the I omegas or the omegas. In fact, it's it's I, it's I times the omegas, because it's I times the omegas that are the, um, that obey the commutation relations of the rotation. So that's an example. I think it's very nice that this works for compact, for non-compact as well as compact uh, groups. All right, now I'm going to skip a lot of this chapter on group theory and go directly to the um, the Lorentz group. If um, 
if there are any objections or if late, I, I tell you what, um, why don't you at your leisure um, look at it, it's online, it's just the, the notes on group theory, if you look at them, if you want me to do some other part, like on um, SU3 um, or the group of the standard model or brain unification, um, say so, and um, I can, I can um, give a lecture or two on that, but I think instead, what, what would make more sense is to get on to, to leave the mathematics now and get back into the realm of quantum field theory. All right, well, the next topic then is the Lorentz group. And you remember that um, the tricky property for a group, if you have transformations, you automatically have a group as long as you have closure. And you always have closure if the defining property of the group is that it leaves something invariant. Well, in the case of the Lorentz group, it's the inner product x dot y minus x zero y zero, um, which we can call x transpose eta y, where eta, of course, is this matrix this of spa uh, the diagonal matrix, which to, an ex to, to experimental accuracy is the metric of the universe. Um, This Lorentz group is also called SO3-1. Um, the one meaning one, one meaning the time. time. Yeah, one time dimension, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so let me just say what, what, what it is. If you have LX transpose eta LY, which of course is x transpose l transpose eta l y equal to x transpose eta y, then l is in the Lorentz group because it leaves the Minkowski inner product invariant. And so the criterion then, let's see, there haven't been any um, coughs or sneezes, so why don't we shut the windows to cut down on the noise? There have been complaints that the, um, there's too much noise on the audio because of the traffic on the audio. Well, since X and Y are independent, what we see here is that L transpose A to L is equal to A. So this is the criterion for membership in the Lorentz group. If we take the determinant of both sides, we get determinant of L transpose A to L, which is the determinant of L transpose determinant A to determinant L equals determinant A to, well, determinant of L transpose of the center is determinant of L, so we find that the determinant of L is plus or minus one, since the square is one. So in particular, that means that every Lorentz transformation has an inverse, which well, we, it's no surprise because you have transformations that always have inverses. You just undo what we did. Um, and if we take this expression here and um, multiply by eta, we get L transpose A to L equal, uh, sorry, A to, equals A to squared, which is just the four by four identity. So the inverse, L inverse, is evidently this. It's just L transpose A to L. Now, um, we obviously have two subgroups, one with determinant L equal to plus one, one with determinant L equal to minus one. Actually, I'm being a little too uh, sloppy here because if you have two Lorentz transformations and you take the determinant of the product if they're both minus one, then this determinant is nonetheless plus one. 
So the sub the, the, the ter determinants with determined L equal to minus one do not form by themselves a subgroup. So in fact, we're going to stick to the ones with determinant L equal to plus one. Yeah, I mean, the, the ones, let me be clear. The Lorentz group has, one, has matrices with determinant L equal to plus one or determinant L equal to minus one. But the ones that have determinant L equal to plus one form a subgroup. And that's called the orthochronous uh, subgroup. Orthochronous meaning that it doesn't um, screw up the sign of time for time like that. I say orthochronous. Huh? Yes, right. Orthochronous. Yes. Um, okay, so if we're looking for the Lie algebra then for the ones with determined L to the plus one, and so the, we write L equal to i plus, again, omega, where omega is something small. And so what is our criterion? Well, it's just this one right here. This is the criterion for membership in the Lorentz group. And that tells us that um, i plus omega transpose eta i plus omega is equal to um, eta. And if we expand this out, what we get is eta plus omega transpose eta plus eta omega plus omega transpose omega equals eta. And uh, so in fact, um, we get that um, omega transpose eta plus eta omega is approximately zero. I'm dropping omega, the one that's omega squared because we're We've assumed omega is tiny, and the norm of omega is less than one. And um, what then does this tell us? This tells us that um, omega transpose is equal to minus eta omega eta. So this is the defining relation for these tiny matrices omega, which will which, of course, are the generators of the Lorentz group. So they satisfy that relation. And now what we need to do is we need to find some simple linearly independent uh, matrices that, and in fact, we're looking at four by four matrices because we're talking about the defining representation of the Lorentz group, which is defined initially in terms of four vectors. All right, so. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yes. This, this might be stupid, but why is, why is this L inverse? Let me talk this to you. What now? Why is this L inverse? Yeah. Well, because I got this equation L transpose eta L. Eta is eta squared, which is the identity. Does that not show that it's eta inverse? Jesus, you're right. I've screwed up. Um, I think I think you're right. Actually, I think I've. Um, Screwed up here somehow. Um, so let's just see. Ah, I wrote it. I, I multiplied from the wrong side. My left arm must have been down here. Um, what we do, we have this equation. L transpose eta L equals eta. We multiply now by eta, but from the left. So we get eta L transpose eta L equals eta squared equals the identity. 
Now we see that this times L is the identity. And so L inverse, it's not what I wrote down, which when I wrote it down, I, I thought there was something funny about it because it was quadratic in L. In fact, L inverse is eta L transpose eta. So you, you really must watch out when my left column is down. Okay? If, I'm, if I stop winging things, I can, I can screw up. But anyway, if you take this equation, multiply by eta, you get this, and therefore that. Um, you get an extra chocolate for it. Did I already give you a chocolate? You already gave me one. All right, well, here's another one. Yeah, any time you point out a mistake, you get two chocolates. Okay, so nonetheless, this, there's no, nothing wrong with that equation. And so now let's see what, um, what we've learned. What we've learned here is that these tiny generators must satisfy this. Now what does this say? This, this eta is something that flips the sign of a time component. And so what this says is if you put an eta in, an omega in here, and you hit it with two etas, you're flipping time twice, which is to say you're not flipping time at all. And yet you get a minus sign. So that means that um, under transposition, time, the time time matrix elements change sign. And in fact, you can figure out by working this out. In fact, I think this might be a good exercise. Why don't I make this a homework problem for next Wednesday? Not for Monday, next Wednesday. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Omega T something. What I want you to what you I want you to show. I'm asking what you're saying. Huh? What is it? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. That the space space matrix elements of omega also change sign. But that the time space and space time ones uh, don't change sign, so uh, stay put. What does that even mean? I don't understand what you mean when you're saying these things. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me give an example. In fact, I'll, I'll show you the, I'll, show, I'll give you the answer, and then you'll see why it works. But this will be the homework, a homework problem. So, what one can then do is write omega in general as theta dot r plus lambda dot b, r for rotation generators, b for boost generators, and the r's are going to be this way, r1, these are essentially the omegas. So that's R1. R2 So, in other words, what you can do here is take this, say, take, let us say, one of these R's, R1, say, take R1 transpose. So, R1 transpose will be minus 1, 1 
and everything else is zero. And what I'm saying is that this is the same thing as minus eta <coughs> times R1 times eta again. So if I multiply this out, minus 1 hitting this just gives 0. So this is going to be minus, minus 1, 1, 1, 1. Now this one gives us 0, 0, 0, 0. And then 0, 0, 0, 0. And now we're going to get 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 0, minus 1, 0. And now multiplying this, what we're going to get is minus, and then it's going to be and now Space, space has to change sign. And these indeed change sign on this transposition. So now, what I'm saying is that time, time has to change sign, but time, space don't change sign. So the B's are going to be like that. zero column with all zeros. Right. So that's what the B's look like. So we have six generators. Space, time, and you know all these things. You're just talking about if there's off-diagonal elements between, like, you know, this is one. time. This is time. Yeah, that's this time. is time. Time. This is time. Space. Okay. Yeah. This is space. Space. This space. is time. Space. Okay. Yeah. Or space. Time. This is space. Time. Right. Time. Space. 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 Time. Time. Okay. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. Can you repeat that? What? Can you, can you repeat that? Time, 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 space, space, time, space, space. Thanks. And it's just because this eta has a minus one here in the time, time. And then you go time, and then the rows become space. So the bottom rows are, are, are from the row point of view, space. The first one from the column point of view is time. And then as you go over, it becomes space. 
All right. So these are, we have then three, three R's and three B's, and one can show that these are a set of linearly independent generators that satisfy this relation here. And you can also show, although I'm not sure how it's, let me just say that it's true, one can show that if you find some other generator that obeys this relation and you add it to this group of six generators, you're going to have a linearly dependent set of 4 by 4 matrices. Um, all right, let me now say what is our infinitesimal Lorentz transformation then? It's I, and now in physics notation we'll throw out an extra I here, and we'll have theta L, and then these R's, what I do, they're, they're real and anti-symmetric, so they're anti-hermitian. But if we multiply by I, they become hermitian. Similarly, the B's, well, B's, are real and symmetric, so they're Hermitian. But if we do this physicist thing of putting an I here, well, then they turn out to be anti-Hermitian. So this is a... So in physics lingo, this is what they are. And now, once again, in physics lingo, we, we, we rewrite this as I minus I theta L JL Minus I lambda J lambda J. What do you know? K J. So I. S yeah. Okay. I have a quick question. So should this over here that I be plus I omega in there? What is the equation? This L equals I plus omega. Oh no no no! Over here, over here, omega is just some small matrix okay. that's going to be our generic generator. We want to see what the gen what relation the generator has to satisfy. And then once I come over here, I say, well, let's, uh, I, I sort of give the answer because omega has to obey this. And so, so I'm, I'm letting it be that. Well, now, but you're quite right, we could have taken this could have taken this relation, multiply both sides by i, yeah. or minus i, and that amounts to the same thing. Yeah. Okay, so basically then we've got these generators JL, which is I, R, L, and these are Hermitian. On the other hand, the other generators are, say, KJ, which is I, BJ, and these are anti hermitian which means that KJ dagger is minus KJ. All right, and the reason for that is that they're non, is that the, the Lorentz group is not compact, the, 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 the rotation part of it is compact, and that and the rotation part of the Lorentz group can be generated by Hermitian generators, but the boost part, where the boost can go off to infinity in uh, the amount of um, uh, energy that you put into a particle, um, they are uh, generated by anti-Hermitian uh, generators. And I think I'm going to add one more homework problem, namely that I want you to verify that JIJJ is I epsilon IJKJK, these, that is to say that the J's, these are 4 by 4 matrices, they obey the commutation relations of the rotation group. 
On the other hand, J i k j is i epsilon i j k k sub k. The k's behave like a, the three k's behave like a three vector when commuted with the uh, j's. And that makes sense, that the, the k's are the generators for a boost, and so they form a three vector, so under rotation they should behave like a three vector. Then there's the mystical relation. Um, this is the one Weinberg understands. Um, minus i epsilon i j k j k. Well, in other words, and this was kind of like what we did in class, but I cannot imagine how to illustrate this in class. Um, in fact, if I try it, I'd probably make a terrible mess. But anyway, the commutator of two boost generators is a rotation. So that says, in other words, that four canceling infinitesimal boosts amount to lowest order to a rotation. All right, um, by the way, it, you can look at this and you see that if you have six generators that satisfy these relations, the commutation relations of the Lorentz group, if you flip the sign of k, you still, it still works because k is linear in the second and it's quadratic in the third. On the other hand, if you flip the size of the sign of the j's, you'd be, you, it wouldn't work because the first equation is quadratic on the left-hand side of the j's and linear on the right-hand side. So j minus k also work as are OK. All right, now let's write down what an infinitesimal uh, Lorentz transformation looks like. Write them in a nicer way. 
prime, and here I'm, I, I'm, I'm in units with c equal to 1. t prime is t plus lambda dot x. And x vector prime is x vector plus t lambda vector plus theta cross x cross product. Okay, so that's that's a nice simple form for an infinitesimal Lorentz transformation. And of course, it's um, it's these infinitesimal transformations that tell us almost everything. Nonetheless, what is the finite transformation? Well, L is an exponential of these things. E to the minus i, theta L, J L, minus i, lambda J, K J. So that's the, that's the Lorentz transformation. And this is the subgroup that's connected to the identity because um, obviously if you shrink theta and lambda, you just get back to the identity. And as I said, this is the um, orthochronous Lorentz group. It's also proper um, because the determinant is 1. So it's proper ortho orthochronous. So proper determinant L plus 1. And it's. Um, it preserves the sign of time. The, you get the rest of the Lorentz group. Uh, by acting on this with parity, time reversal, and the product of parity time times times time reversal. And that gives you um, the whole Lorentz group. All right, now it turns out that something magical happens. And let me tell you about it. It's that you can define new operators, JL, equal to 1 half JL plus or minus I KL. And remarkably enough, these are Hermitian. In fact, in an early version of the notes, I somehow wrote them as anti-hermitian, but uh, as, as non-hermitian. But in fact, it's K that's anti-hermitian, so IK is hermitian. These are hermitian. Not only are they hermitian, but they satisfy these magic relations. Do these have any relation to the ladder operators? Well, yes. Yes, they do. Um, I guess that's worth a chalk, but no? All right. Um, okay. Remarkable thing is that you define in this way two sets of three permission operators, or matrices, I should say, four by four matrices. The J pluses satisfy the commutation relations of the rotation group. The J minuses satisfy the commutation relations of the rotation group. But the two commute with each other. So the structure of the Lie algebra of the Lorentz group is vastly simpler than one would have thought. And so the way you can make representations of the Lorentz group is you find matrices that represent the J pluses, you find matrices that represent the J minuses, and you're done. Now, well, done, if you have a line that includes MATLAB and Mathematica and the rest of it. Um, but in principle, you're done. Um, now, how do you find representations? Of, well, this is what you learn in quantum mechanics. That is to say, um, for any 
spin S, say, or uh, let us say any spin J, there are two J, there are three, two J plus one by two J plus one square matrices that obey this relation. And then for any spin J prime, any integer J, any integer or half integer J prime, there are another three, two J prime by two J prime, two J prime plus one by two J prime plus one dimensional matrices J minus that satisfy this. So in other words, you just remember your quantum mechanics and you find square, three square matrices of one size that's, that represent the J pluses, three square matrices of another side that represent the J minuses. And then you've got the J pluses and the J minuses. So for any half integer J, any half integer J prime, you've got the J pluses and the J minuses. You then find the JLs and the KLs by inverting these two equations, and you're all set. So let me let me show you what that is, and then it'll be story time. And I hope I can think of a story. Um, yes. yes. Can you explain a little more what you mean about the rest of the Lorentz group and parity time inversal? Parity and time inversal. Uh, well, the basic idea is that Lorentz transformations leave invariant the inner product of x with y. Right? Um, what is parity? So let me let me use this board for that. Parity is just a transformation. 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Okay. And time reversal is just minus 1. Well, in fact, it's just eta. Okay, so what did we say the rule was for being a Lorentz matrix? We said the rule was L transpose eta L is eta. Okay. So let's suppose that L satisfies this. Then what I'm saying is that PL, eta, PL, transpose, will also be eta. Well, what will that be? That'll be L transpose, P transpose, but P transpose is P, eta P, L, okay? But now, if you just look at P A to P, you see that P A to P is just one, or just eta. In other words, P A to P is just eta. So this is L transpose A to L, but this is eta. So PL is the Lorentz transformation of L is. Similarly, TL is the Lorentz transformation of L is. And then this PT, well PT is just minus one. So if L is a Lorentz transformation, minus L is also a Lorentz transformation because this is a relation that's quadratic in L. So PTL, PL, TL, these are all Lorentz transformations if L is. L, the L we've been looking at is, are the ones that have determinant one, and moreover are orthochronous, which means that they, if the thing is time, if X is time light and X zero is positive, then X zero prime is also positive. And um, 
those will give you the determinants with neg those will give you the determinants of negative one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say that again. So those transformations will give you the L's that have determinants of negative one. Some will. Some will. Not all of them. Um, let's compute the determinant. Suppose determ Suppose L is has determinant one. Then, and, and let's look at the, the, the three cases here. Well, this one is just minus L, and so this, so the determinant of minus L is just one also, because you have the, the, the minus one gives you four minus signs, which is a plus sign. On the other hand, determinant of PL is determinant of P, determinant of L, which is just determinant of P, but P has three minus signs, so it's, net, it's minus one. And similarly, determinant of TL has one minus sign, so that's minus one. So the determinants are plus, minus, minus. So does or PT, put it differently, plus, plus, minus, minus. So does PT acting on L give you anything that you didn't already have in the determinant one group. Say that again. So our original group is a subgroup of the Lorentz transforms that has determinant one and is uh, a thing to do with time. I can't right, the well, Bacharnus, right. Yeah. So the, the, the ones that we're dealing with that are connected to the identity, the subgroup that's connected to the identity, the proper Bacharnus ones, they have determinant plus one. But the PT ones also have determinant plus one. So do they check? Do they are they not orthogonous, or are they? Or does PT not? No, they're not orthogonous because they flip the sign of time. So they all, all those transformations give you something that you didn't have in your original subgroup. Right. Yeah. But I think what you can say is that the unity of these two forms a subgroup. It's a subgroup that have determinant one. But these ones have determinant minus one. So they don't form. And the ones that are orthogonous are these guys. No. Yeah, exactly. All right, so these are all good questions. Um, do you want a chocolate or are you more worried about diabetes? I think I've probably got enough to keep me huh? going. I've got enough to keep me going, I think. All right. All right. Actually, since it's Halloween, I'm going to give out a chocolate to anybody who wants it. Anybody want a chocolate? <laughs> what I'm really thinking of is those who didn't get one today. Um, so, all right, let me give chocolate to them. One to you. One to you. Sure, I need you. I need to give you one too. All right, hold on. <laughs> Well, thank you. Well, I know, I know you got one from the guy with the red hat. But. All right, so we're all square. Let's see, it's sort of, um, it's sort of story time, but let me, let me go on with the lecture because I, I can't think of a story um, immediately. What have, what have we learned? Um, we're all here. We've learned that we can find these. Well, maybe I should try to tell a story. Um, I told you about the time I asked Dirac a question and he didn't answer it. Um, I once met Heisenberg, but I'm afraid all I did was shake his hand and say, How do you do? Um, so I don't have anything to report there. Um, I'm afraid I'm totally unprepared. I have not, I've been. Uh, if something occurs to me, I'll. I might as well just go on with the lecture then, because I just can't. Think of anything. Well, there was a Stevenson remark. 
demons. In fact, if you want some really great quotes, just Google Stevenson, um, Governor Stevenson. He ran for president twice, but he had the worst luck possible. He ran against Dwight Eisenhower. And Dwight Eisenhower had won World War II in Europe and in fact had been uh, running. So he was, he was the hero. And uh, he was a, a good Republican president. Um, in fact, probably was the last really good Republican president. Um, although Nixon, I must say, was not nearly as bad as some of them. And it was nearly as bad as W. Um, or as bad as Reagan. Um, I'm not a Reagan fan. Um, anyway, Stevenson was once approached by a woman at a meeting of some kind, and the woman said to him, Governor Stevenson, um, why do you keep telling people the truth? Shouldn't you color it a little bit to make it more palatable? Um, because you're just not going to get elected. And so he turned to her and said, but I don't, I don't have to get elected. Well, it was a joke when he told it. I'm afraid my delivery isn't very good. So. <laughs> Anyway, if you do Google um, quotations of Governor Stevenson, there, he, he said there must be 20 examples, and many of them are really very, very witty. Um, uh, I, all right, here's a, a brief story. This is by Auden. Auden was a poet, W.H. Auden. And um, one, of his, one of his very short poems was, or maybe it's just a was, we are here on earth to do good to others. What the others are here for, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, on with the lecture. Um, so we found uh, then that you can, you can find these just for, by knowing the different representations of the rotation group and the generators, each re representation of the Lorentz of the rotation group has three generators. And now you just pick two representations of the rotation group, J and J prime, and you have three matrices J plus, let us say, sub L, and J minus sub L, these ones are 2J plus 1 square, and these ones are 2J prime plus 1 square. And there are three of each. And then you have a representation of the Lorentz group. And that representation is conventionally written as JJ prime. And if we if I use this exponential parameterization in terms of vectors theta and lambda, this is E to the minus I theta AL JL minus I lambda L KL. But of course, these lambdas and, and j's are such, let me just remind you that jl plus or minus, let's just see, is one half jl plus or minus i k sub l. And so, J plus L plus J minus L. What is that? That's just JL. And J plus L minus J minus L. 
What will that be? That will be I. Um, KL. Right, that will be I KL. So KL is minus I J plus L minus J L minus. And now if you just substitute in here, we have E to the minus I theta L. And now JL is, well, this is, I don't have this equation, so I'm going to just write it this way. JL plus plus JL minus, and then minus I lambda L, and then KL is minus I JL plus minus JL minus. But now these matrices commute with each other. Shouldn't it just be a plus? Oh, sorry. So this is e to the minus i, well, let's bring up the left hand, minus i theta l minus lambda l j plus l. And then we can write it this way, minus i theta l and minus, minus is a plus, plus lambda l j l minus. Are, are your j and j primes different? j and j prime can be different, yes. So um, I guess I'm kind of confused in your, oh, you just expand, or you do expand j minus and j plus are the same size? Well, what we're talking about here is direct product. So the jls are whatever they are, the kls are whatever they are. Okay. And now we have the direct product. And um, so in fact, this thing is what we can say. We can say that this is dj of theta lambda dj prime of theta lambda. multiplying those two representations if they're different size. Generally think of them as matrices. No, no, you think of them as matrices, but um, are they a tensor? It's a, yeah, it's tensor product. Direct product or tensor product. Okay. Alright, well, we're almost at the end of the hour. Let me give a um, Let me just give an example. And this is an important example. Suppose we consider D one half to zero. Then J is a half, J prime is zero. So we take j plus to be just sigma over 2, the three power matrices. j minus is just 0. So j is equal to sigma over 2. k is minus i over 2 sigma. Or equivalently, it's minus i sigma over 2. And so, here, d1 half 0 of theta lambda is e to the minus i theta dot sigma over 2 minus lambda dot sigma over 2. And so you see the boost part is non-compact. This is just the ordinary rotation matrix. Stop, unless there's a question.